An alluring feature of many RPGs is the opportunity for players to design their own characters. However, it can be difficult to set up a good character system that appeals to people new to RPGs as well as existing fans of the genre. A complex character creation system can be overwhelming, and a simple one can lack depth. Yet, there are ways for character specialization to be made more accessible without sacrificing depth. Before we go on, let's take a look at a game that has actually managed to achieve this reasonably well. Diablo 2 is an award-winning action RPG with a massive fan following that persists to this day. It's no surprise coming from Blizzard Entertainment, a company that has adopted Pong creator Nolan Bushnell's design philosophy of easy to learn, difficult to master. Now, there are many things about Diablo 2 that play a role in its success, but we're not interested in all of those right now. Let's focus just on the character creation. It barely even exists. You get to pick a class, but that's it. The class determines the skills you can learn in the future, but you don't start learning skills right off the bat. It gives the player a structure for building their character without having them make complicated choices at the start. It takes a while to unlock some of the more advanced skills, which makes early skill point spending decisions fairly trivial, but they do ramp up in difficulty after a while. The skill tree is also complex enough to allow for many divergent character builds as the player goes on, which can make complete optimization quite a difficult thing to do. This shows that one technique is to place less importance on early choices and more on later choices. This works well for games with a very structured character system like Diablo 2. However, a lot of RPGs would like to give the player more freedom in customizing their characters. Many games even feature classless systems, where all characters draw from a shared group of characteristics. In this case, a downside to de-emphasizing character creation becomes prevalent. When characters begin, they lack specialization. That is, they're all the same until the player gets far enough into the game that meaningful differences can develop. If much of the fun comes from making a custom character and this aspect is not introduced early on, player retention could become an issue. Even if the game eventually allows for specialization, players might just give up before getting to that point because they're missing out on one of the fun parts. It's also especially bad in party-based games because it takes away from the individuality of each party member. A class-based system doesn't encounter this problem to the same degree because each class is inherently specialized to some extent. How can we tackle this issue? Well, let's try cutting straight to its core. Character specialization requires informed decision-making on the part of the player, but that information can only come from having played the game. Defining the problem this way allows us to come up with three generalized ways to overcome it. 1. Don't include character specialization at the beginning. Add opportunities for it as the game goes on and try to make the early game fun despite a lack of specialization. 2. Specialize with simple decisions early on and ramp up the complexity of these decisions over time. 3. Reduce the amount of in-game information the player needs to adequately make early specialization decisions and increase the requisite knowledge as the game progresses. Before I go into detail, I would like to mention that these three are not mutually exclusive, and most games use some combination of the three. The first approach entails reducing or removing early specialization entirely. This is exemplified by the situation that led us here of a classless game that defers character creation decisions. The difference is that this solution proposes that the early game should be made enjoyable even without the character specialization, so that player retention remains unaffected. I haven't seen any RPGs use this very extensively, but one example of limited usage would be Final Fantasy XIII, in which it takes some time before the player is allowed to specialize their characters. This gives the player less choice and less diversification, but the hope is it doesn't matter because the rest of the game is fun enough to keep them playing until the ability to diversify their character is unlocked. The problem with this option is that a good gameplay element should not be held back for very long, and if the game is already fun enough without character specialization, then it may be a totally unnecessary feature. The second approach is to reduce the amount of decision-making the player needs to do early on by making some parts of the specialization decisions for them, and giving them more input as the game progresses. As discussed, Diablo 2 uses this technique quite well. The player gets less choice at the start, but there is still early diversification of characters, 
Plus, more options can open up over time, which gradually increases the complexity as the player gains more in-game knowledge. This method makes specialization possible by removing the need for certain early decisions to be made by the player. The downside is that the player doesn't get to make these decisions even if they would like to. Leaving aside Diablo 2, let me give you an example from Interplay's Wasteland. There are a lot of reasons why this game's character creation system would not be appealing to new players, but right now I want to focus on one particular aspect of it that is quite good. The way it handles flavor skills. These are skills that are not useful very frequently, but add some panache and character to the game. They have the potential to be traps for inexperienced players, but Wasteland avoids the pitfalls quite well. The game has a few very specific flavor skills like toaster repair and human cloning, but these are not available right off the bat. They can only be learned in mid to late game areas. Plus, skill points are gained from intelligence, which is also a prerequisite for learning these skills. This means that only characters with high intelligence, and therefore more skill points to spare, are able to invest in these skills at all. The ability to train acquired skills through usage also reduces the opportunity cost of points spent on flavor skills, because you only need to invest enough for one seed level in any given skill before it can be improved solely through training. As you can see, the various aspects of the game are designed such that flavor skills will not trap players into a terrible build. They are not just presented alongside basic survival skills at character creation, but are separated in a very natural way. The game doesn't allow the player to invest points into these skills unless certain restrictions are overcome. In other words, they can only be learned after the player has already made significant progress and gained an understanding of the game. The third approach is to reduce the amount of gameplay knowledge the player needs in order to make adequate character specialization decisions. This is particularly appealing because it doesn't require us to sacrifice early specialization or even early decision making. However, achieving this in a satisfactory way is not easy. There are two ways to go about doing it. The wrong way is to push the necessary knowledge onto the player before the game even begins, via the manual or some other kind of reference. This makes the manual required reading, which is not conducive to a broad range of appeal. Indeed, this is a potential reason why many people have trouble getting into classic CRPGs. The better but still potentially problematic way is to require less game-specific knowledge entirely. One way to do this is by making the game really, really easy, so that even the worst character builds can beat it. The problem is that most players will not have the worst possible character builds, and thus are likely to get bored when they realize the game lacks any challenge, especially as they play more of it and start becoming able to make better specialization decisions. Another way is to give up on the idea of a 100% foolproof system, and instead to try and ensure that any reasonable character build made without advanced in-game knowledge is still sufficient to get through the early game and has the potential to lead to victory if it continues to develop along a reasonable path. The issue with using reasonableness as a basis is that it requires a lot of judgment, and thus it is unreliable. However, judgment is a key factor in all parts of game design, and reliability can be improved without changing the character system's rules by way of communication. The importance of communication should be fairly self-evident. Players know what to expect from their choices, so they can create a character that seems like it will be good. This allows designers to predict what choices are likely, so they can impose challenges that can be overcome by the average player's character. Of course, this will never be 100% foolproof, but again, that's not necessary. And despite the fact that this seems like an obvious measure to take, most RPGs are terrible at it. Let me pick on Wasteland for a second. It has attributes named agility, speed, and dexterity. Even seasoned players may mix these up, because they are so frequently conflated in video games, and the words are almost synonymous in the minds of players. Just having a better naming convention could make a big difference in accessibility. The problem isn't limited to old games either. Skyrim is quick to tell you that orcs can use Berserker Rage to become more fearsome, which would be fine if the player actually knew what that meant from a gameplay standpoint, but no such explanation is given. An easy compromise would be a simple description up front, like Berserker Rage doubles attack damage and halves damage taken, alongside a more detailed description in the manual if necessary. All that being said, this approach is not without its downsides. Effective communication of the character system is not always easy, and evaluating and improving upon it is a time-consuming process heavily reliant on playtesting. 
there is also a limit to how well you can communicate something based on its inherent complexity. It is relatively easy to understand a square. It is relatively difficult to understand James Joyce's Ulysses. As a result, there is a lot of room for error. Sometimes it's just better to simplify things and impose restrictions as necessary. Now, each of these approaches that we've looked at has their use, and each one has unique downsides. Luckily, they are not mutually exclusive, and some unique combination of the three will likely be ideal for any individual game and its audience. That said, improving communication is the ideal choice when resource constraints are not an issue, because it doesn't require sacrificing depth early on, unlike the other approaches to making RPG character systems more accessible.